Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 1v1 ladder match here on the most amazing Noxious map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players, which is going to be very short, of course, because there's only two players in this game, starting with Team 1 or Blue Team or the Western player or whatever we want to label his side of the map is. It is Blinchik. He is in Stitch blue as a UEF as an 1874 rating and on the eastern side on team two on red team on that other side of the map whatever you want to label it as he is in ruby red it is my eats he is a siren for this match as a 2056 rated play and I'm going to go ahead and speed this thing up just a little bit just because it is of course a ladder match and the early early game is not really that entertaining Let's go ahead and take a look of course the reclaim that our players have to scoop up currently sitting at 4400 mass which of course isn't a lot of mass but in this context where there are only two players that makes it 2200 mass per player which is actually a decent chunk of mass to have at your disposal in reclaim and in terms of mexes we'll take a look at team twos or mites this side of the map there are one two three four five trimax positions here for him to grab two of them in the north two of them in the south and one in the middle couple of one-offs dotted around, but not really a lot more mixes after that. Our players are going to be, of course, focusing on the just upgrading process and trying to keep their holdings as much as possible. I do like this little group of units here, a nice little mole and a mantis, or in this case, a lab and a mole going after the engineer, which will get wiped off the face of the surface of the planet, moon, whatever they're on whatever you want to call it we do see in the west of course fanning out of engineers for blend check fanning out of engineers here for my eats and of course he's going out and getting lots of intelligence here to tell him that hey there's nothing over here where he can move in and continuing to pressure his opponent we do see in the west that blend check is getting a little bit swarmed here swarmed being not really the best word for it just due to the fact that there's only two units but again you know he's having to send units north and resend units south and deal with units running around and it's again not just about how many units that Maits can kill but it's how long can he delay his opponent how long can it go from hey he's spending 30 seconds to do this now spending a minute to do this or he's handing to send forces north and not east or west or whatever and so I can send forces in a different direction we see down here a couple of units going after even more engineers here for team one the blind check again being very annoying most of those units here from my eights get dealt with but again that expansion is getting slowed down every single time those engineers go down have to be resent across the map it's just very annoying for blind check to deal with and you can see that he's not imp implementing the same strategy that he that might is essentially throwing on him it's a one-sided affair here in favor of my eats for that strategy. In terms of the eco situation, it is a little bit in favor of Blinchik. So even though he's taken a couple of early losses, he's able to mitigate them and get his eco, of course, pretty much in par, if not a little bit in favor of himself in this game. But you see there's a mechs missing there. Mexes are being built down there. Mechs is already established here. Now more mechs is being taken offline here for my eats. Of course, strategy has now been rethrown at his opponent but of course instead of going with a nice little intel unit and then a tank it's just a couple of the tanks which doesn't allow for more intelligence gathering but it does just punch straight through it does more damage not a lot of of course utility but it is nice to just take out stuff quickly and uh, efficiently lots of spam going to the north to deal with these units and lots of spam going south would do the exact same thing my eats, of course, doesn't have that many avenues of attack. He has straight down the middle. He has the southern side and the northern side. There's a couple of outcroppings. He can go all the way around. So maybe we'll see one of these two players just kind of deploy this all the way on the edge of the map strategy, which we have seen in other maps. It just is a little difficult to do because if you go straight west, in this case, and then straight south, you run into a cliffside. So you kind of have to curve a little bit, which you may not work out in that strategy we do see that now Blinchig is on the eastern side of this little pond here Maitz is moving in with his commander a couple of units nothing too worrisome here for Blinchik. looks like he just went for the mexes and just said you know that's fine I'm not going to worry about it I took six masses a second off of you so I'll stick with that 
for now in the north. A large group of units moving in from Maita's position. Again, he's just sending one group of forces from these, I was going to say Mexes, but facilities north. And the same thing south. And it is an interesting strategy where he's not sending that much to the middle. He has his comm here. He's really using his comm as aggressively as possible. Same thing here with Blinchik. Both of these commanders know what they're doing. They play this game a lot. You know, we're talking about 1,800 to you know, 21, essentially. So these players know what they're doing very, very well, which is one of the reasons why I like casting high-rated 1v1s because this is just peak-level entertainment in the one-on-one -on -one affair. It is not a annihilation game, which it could be. It technically still is, but it's mainly an assassination game where can one player kill the other one off faster because if you kill one player, that's it. Game over. You win, or if you die, you lose. There's no second chance with another teammate. There's nothing. It's just you versus the other person on the other side of the map. We do see a couple units moving in here for Blinchik. Again, same thing earlier on. Not really any worrisome amount of units building for one way or the other. This is a little bit sketchy, a little bit, but there are some forces here for Blinchik. So it's really a not even affair, but it's pretty darn close. It does look like T2 land is online, though, so those T2 units will be very, very potent in dealing with the rest of those Mantis from a Team 2 Cybran player. And we do have a Cybran via a UEF, so the classic matchup here in the, of course, customary blue for the UEF and red for the Cybrans. Love to see that, of course, uh, coming in from the campaign, because when you play UEF, you play the blue, and you play the Cybran, you play as red. This is the faction colors. I wish you could change them because I prefer, of course, to play in, as forest green. But, you know, can't always have the things that we want, that sort of thing. Nice little flat cannon running around going after those bombers running around. Nothing too worrisome. But this is a little bit worrisome here for Blinchik. Losing a couple more mexes, of course. The focus not on the facility, not on the radar, which I would have loved to see. But that's another six max a second down. Engineers immediately moving in to replace those lost unit and use the lost units lost structures so it's not really looking good on the south side here for Blinchik eh, it's not great but it's not bad for Maitz in the north so it looks like so far team twos Maitz is winning the south and doing very well in the north nothing hugely in favor of Blinchik though but he does have t2 land and he has t2 air so he's producing some gunships I feel like he should produce maybe some Janus to really just bombard large groups of units stacking up. Mites has built a gun upgrade. Blinchik has built a gun upgrade, so they are both running around with those upgrades on board. I would like to find some way to fix the whole nonsense of why isn't it showing me the white text to say, hey, this comm is building this, this comm is building this, this is progress on it. I don't know what the setting is. I've looked through them. I can't find it. I think that's the one, if not, I think there's maybe one other setting that I'm missing from my old machine, or other machine, I should say. The one at home that is a lot better at doing the everything. But, you know, this is what I got. This is what I work with. I have to work with, so that's just what I have to deal with for now. It's not a big deal. It's a little frustrating because it's not my normal setup that I've been using for videos for the past, oh shoot, year and a couple of months. But at least it's better than having no videos released for two weeks. And I think everybody else would agree that You'd rather have something, which is better than nothing, which I always say, but, you know, there are some that would say just wait, but, you know, not going to get into that right now. Anyways, sorry right, for the distraction of the nonsense going on here from myself. It is 16 minutes on the clock here. It does look like Team 2's might is doing very well and just holding the middle of the map and not letting Blinchik invade. He is pushing with his commander. Probably will regret that decision as he continues to be pushed back by that com com going for an upgrade he has stealth now on board nano has been canceled so i wouldn't be surprised if he restarts it here shortly in the north looks like a little bit more standoffish tactics here for e between both of these forces team one's high amount of t2 tech units there are some t2 units as well but it does look like Linjik is pushing in with them a little bit more than his opponent mainz is playing aggressively defensive or defensively aggressive. I don't really know. I think it'd be more defensively aggressive. He is pushing in areas where he can push, but not pushing in when he needs to. 
allowing his opponent to push in, regain territory. Of course, these mexes have been offline for a while. And these mexes over here to the south have been online for a while. So again, it's just that scenario of you can see the eco slowly starting to favor Maitz as his mexes have been online. More upgrades are coming online. And Blanchik is catching up. You know, it's only about seven mass a second difference, but that can snowball very quickly if either team or either player is not careful of not continuing to eco or not eco enough. Maitz going for an upgrade, getting assisted by all of those engineers nearby. Kind of surprised he doesn't have any other Mantis, but at this point I think he's just going to be fine with those engineers. He does produce the nano upgrade on board, starting the T3 land headquarters upgrade here for Blinchik. Again, that is very important. He might go straight for Percy's. Usually it's Titans than Percy's, but we have seen scenarios where UEF players just ignore that fact and just go straight for Percy's because why not? They are the far superior unit. The only situation in which the Titan is better is if you have a lot of T1s that you're facing versus a couple of Titans. The Titans will just rip those apart. The Percy's will too, but it'll take them longer is the problem. The faster you kill units, the less damage you take, the less damage you take, the more hit points you have left, which means you can survive more battles and all that sort of good goodness. Might's not pushing and getting a couple of T1 PD online just to protect this flank as he sends his forces forward. Will that keep Team 1 might, uh, Blinchik at bay? Probably not, but you know, a Team 1 PD or 2 never hurt anybody. Maybe. See lots of Vipers in this group as well, just poking and prodding at all the T1 PD and the facilities nearby. That uh, T1 PD will finish, but uh, I don't think it's going to last much longer. A couple of Lobo firing shots into that thing will wipe it out very quickly. Blinchik notices a little bit of a vulnerability and does move into intercept and try to take out some units, but he's not seeing his comm folding in with all those units. Noticing these players keeping the bulk of their forces back, letting the comms lead, and then if the comms are feeling threatened, just throwing the forces forward to cover them. I've seen that strategy a decent amount, but especially in 1v1s and 2v2s and that sort of like smaller numbers ladder matches where players use their comms aggressively as much as they can and then they throw their units forward to cover. Of course, you see that replicated in other games and other numbers or quantities of players, but I, I do see that a lot. I mean, look at this positioning. Maitz is far ahead of his forces, but he's in a position where with the nano and the gun on board, he can survive a couple of hits for a little bit before those forces can get there. I think it's all about mitigating losses. Each faction, of course, has its advantages and disadvantages. Siren's very known for their utility. I mean, they have a teleporting uh, laser commander combo. They have the Torp upgrade as well. They get decent nano. Very effective in that regard. The UEF, they have a missile that they can build into a nuke or upgrade to a nuke or a mini nuke or billy nuke. And they're just known for their tankiness, you know, shields and that sort of thing. So each player wants to play to their strengths and mitigate their losses as much as possible. And so far, without... This, you know, tanking up would be a good way to put it, I think, for Blinchik. Getting a firebase online, holding a position with PD, T3 specifically as well, artillery, that sort of thing. He's really playing into the strengths of Maitz where, you know, they can really shuffle around a lot easier than, say, UEF can. But that's just my take, of course, on the situation currently. Let me know down in the comments what you think or who you think is going to win this game. Of course, Eco is a little bit of an indicator of who possibly could win. It isn't the tell-all, but it is a little bit of a window. We have 100 mass being produced here by Team 1. Blinchik, Team 2's Maitz producing, of course, 90 mass per second. That group of forces to the north retook out those mexes once again. So those mexes not staying online long term. These mexes down here have now been taken offline. Lots of rhinos moving in to secure the area. Now we see a little bit of a sandwiching happening where these forces are being pushed back and now into the calm with these forces over here poking from the north. So not looking good here for Team 1's essentially uh, security in that vulnerable state. They're not bleeding anywhere except maybe from the north, but this could be a very vulnerable thing. The only disadvantage now that Maitz is facing is he's sending his units in one by one, which is not a good thing to do, especially with a large amount of forces or even a equal amount of forces. 30 guns firing at one target is a lot better than 30 targets firing at 30 targets. 
you mitigate a lot of losses if you only have to deal with one enemy at a time. And now we see the forces in the north moving in once again. It's just a huge dance of just back and forth, back and forth, trying to keep their opponents at bay while at the same time pushing in. T3 land is done here for Maid. So both players have T3 land tech. Maybe T3 air tech will be developed by Blinchik. We'll just have to see. It's just one of those things where it will T3 air actually play a role? A lot of ladder matches, I just see them go to T2 and call it a day just because the match ends not decently quickly but quicker than other matches in this scenario where I mean the match is going to go on for at least another 25 minutes or so so there's a lot of time for T3 to make a stage appearance but we'll just have to see where are the T3 units being sent are there any Percy's yes there is one here being produced about to be off this, the assembly line here one of them would be sent north to act as a bodyguard for the calm or go up here. There is one already up here, but we'll see if it goes up there as well. There isn't a lot of T3 units at all online as of yet, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some built here pretty shortly. It needs to get those T3P gens online to supply the power for those investments. Of course, not as important as when you need to go for air or navy, but you still need those T3 just in case. Transport with a unit on board. I don't... Is that a... Percy on board? That is a Percy on board given that the legs kind of fold in there for more aerodynamic nonsense. But the T3, sorry, the T2 air headquarters is now coming online here so now we see some investment in air so maybe we'll see a counter to go for T3. Both these players should be scouting very regularly. Not as much actually surprising from Blinchik. He hardly sees any of the base. In the east here was my eats have seen he sees the, the T3 facility. He sees where the comm is. He sees the T2 air. And he has, of course, a T2 radar as well. And he has a lot of radar installations around the map, giving him a nice little early warning system and constant intelligence. In a 10x10 10 10 like this, an Omni is all you would need in your main base, pretty much. Yeah, it's a little bit better to have it a little bit far forward to get that Omni really just cooking with all of the range on board. But at least in terms of seeing everything on the map, Mostly, getting T3 is kind of important. And we see that Blinchik is suffering. He has one radar system down here, and that's it. I don't see any other radar system. So he's really hurting on intelligence. He needs to get that air scouting happening a lot more to assist with that. In the north, we do see more forces just colliding with one another. A lot of T2, a decent amount of T1. Medusa, a couple of T3. I thought I saw that other Percy somewhere, but maybe he... Uh, no, he's not that there. Maybe it's just the one. I did see one on the transport, but I don't know where... Oh, it's up here, actually. Blinchik sends the unit up here, but now a T2 gunship's going to come in. It's 7,200 hit points to chew through, so it's going to be a little bit of time, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, another one is inbound. By the time that unit reaches these mexes, either it will be mostly dead or dead. So yeah, it was a nice play, but it just got countered pretty easily. So very unfortunate for Blinchik. Love the strategy, but just his opponent is either ready for it or easy to adapt to it. A couple of bricks in the water. We see over here in the middle, Blinchik still running around. He has three-star veterans seeing on board that commander. Gets nice overcharge, kills off a rhino there. Might at one-star veterans, but of course has nano and gun. And that is a very important thing to note that 28 hit 28 hit points a second region. I had to check for a second. And 84 hit points a second region. That is a huge difference. Huge, huge difference. That is, what is it, three times the amount? Yeah, that's three times the amount of, ma of uh, hit points per second. So he can mitigate more damage. Now, eventually you can rip apart any sort of region. doesn't matter. But it does make a difference, especially with this few amount of units running around even though they are T3. A couple of bricks come up against a couple of Percy's, bet on the Percy's every single time. You can see they just rip apart those hit points very quickly. And of course the Lobos are coming into assist as well. That never hurts. We're seeing T3 starting to make its main stage appearance in the land department, at least air. Not as of yet. We do see T3 has been almost completed and will be completed now. Of course, spy planes coming online to get some vision on Team 2 side of the map for Team 1. And of course, I still say Team 1 and Team 2. It's just a habit. I do apologize. I know it's a 1v1. Yeah, there are technically teams, but they're technically not teams because it's a 1v1. But still, 
Uh, again, if you refer, you hear me refer to Team 1 and Team 2, Team 1 is in the West, Team 2 is in the East. And in terms of the game so far, Team 1 and Team 2, Blinchik versus Maitz, staying at roughly the same amount of eco, a little bit in favor of Blinchik, but not by much, 8, 10 mass or so. In terms of map control, it, it's very fluid, but I would definitely kind of cut it in favor of Maitz at the current moment. I'd say 52% versus 48%. Relatively, and let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win this game. And of course, if you haven't done so already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your pets because even your pets deserve to watch quality content. That is this wonderful game that is to bring Commander Forge Alliance forever. If you see that three star vegetancy almost up to four star vegetancy here for Blinchick. Still only has the gun upgrade. Kind of surprised he hasn't gone for any sort of shield upgrade or even T2 or any sort of other upgrade to really assist with the middle of the map you can see it's bare bones for both of these players but of course Blinchik not having these mexes online it's hurting this is 18 this per second mass that Maitz is getting that Blinchik is not just because this roaming band of bricks and rhinos and whatnot are running around constantly and I'm trying to lock in the uh, mass per second but it's just not letting me do that you know I hit double click or whatever the command is to just set it there but it's not staying which is very frustrating again if anybody knows how to get that white text to appear if there's a setting I've looked for it I couldn't find it I could have read something wrong which is entirely possible I was saying hey this com is building this upgrade or hey it, this is how much progress is on that kind of white text let me know down in the comments so I can get this thing essentially as close as possible to my old machine it's one of those things where I made a change by accident or on purpose and then forgot how to make it and then can't find how I made that change <laughs> anywhere. It's that sort of thing. We're approaching on the 30 minute mark here. And Team 2 is looking very well. In terms of map control, Team 1, of course, needs to really get that middle position online. The only issue, of course, we're trying to hold it is these bricks come out of the water, blip it down very quickly, and then hide back down. It's very one-sided in that regard. Essentially, you'd have to build a base back here to really make a little bit of no man's land, but then these mixes are in no man's land, so at the end of the day, it's not that great here for Blinchik. And now we see that he sent his comm to the north. Got a transport on board, which is very dangerous. That transport gets shot down. That's a dead comm. We did see a lot of interceptors moving in, almost like he knew, or Maiz knew that's what was going on. You can't see him up there, but Maybe he saw something or felt something, maybe, through the ether. A couple of bricks moving unopposed. There's nothing really here. There's more Percy's being built, but it's going to take a couple of seconds or 30 seconds or however long it's going to take to build those. But Team 2's going to have a little bit of just a nice, fun time in Blinchik's main base. We do see wall sections around the map just to kind of curtail enemy movement here for Blinchik couple of units dropped off it looks like or walked over most likely dropped or possibly walked over here more units moving down here and i like this what's going on he sends a couple units north as a distraction goes after a couple of mexes while he sends another group of forces south to go after another group of mexes really sniping at maitza's eco now what he needs to do is go north drop another group of units and send it from that direction we do see the comm has been transported over once again or he walked most likely transported over and he has lost a couple of P-Gens, and is that hurting his power? Well, to be fair, even though he lost those P-Gens, he still would be hurting the power due to all the power required to build power. So you need power to build power, to have more power, to build more power. It's like in order to have money, you got to spend money. In order to spend money, you got to have money. It's that, that's that whole thing. We do see that in the middle. Still, Maitz holding position. Same thing with Blinchik. We haven't seen a lot of com on com action. A little bit in the beginning and a little bit kind of dotted around the map, but that's really about it. You can see Blinchik's eco really suffering because of that power loss. Once he fixes it, though, see, there we go. He's back up to 155. Oh, oh, he's back down again. Never mind. In north, again, another group of forces moving in. This is really where Blinchik is vulnerable. Multiple attack runs have happened here. Multiple mexes have been taken offline. One after the other after the other. It's really hurting his eco long term. 
You can see in the southeast again, it's starting to happen more frequently here against Maitz here for Blinchik, but not as many times. And we do see the counters are very sparse in the sense that there's a large group of forces need to divert to another large group of forces here from Blinchik to Maitz. And in the southeast, we have air units de dispatched against ground units who can't fire at air units. And yeah, there are a couple of ASF inbound, but a little bit kind of slow to the call there, which will mean another Percy falls offline. Those are a couple of units that probably could have survived had those ASF responded sooner. And yes, there are some interceptors to try to counter those ASF, but there's a lot of ASFs at this point. Those interceptors may get one or two of them, but all of them will be taken out. And that one just got wiped out of the sky, to be fair. And here comes the slaughtering of said interceptors. There is a spy plane mixed in there and an ASF as well. Again, it's one versus, I'd say, half a dozen or so. And those triangles for Maits are being completed very quickly. Transport with another group of units inbound. There are engineers to scoop up the reclaim. It's really going to help my not Maits, but Blinchik rebuild once again. And another group of, I think those are engineers? No, those are Percy's on a nice little star lifter. He's going to send them over here. If he sends them too far in, they will be shot down by a transport. Air Scout does spot them. We'll see how far in transport. Oh, is it going to get shot down? It does. He sends him in too far. Ooh. That's got to hurt. So that's three units plus a transport. That's 2,600 mass. That's not great. That's a T3 max worth of mass, roughly. And now we see another gunship just down there. Now we see the combat mites coming in to A, secure the area for them engineers to come and to reclaim or himself or B and B take out the rest of these forces from Blinchik. Now the fighting is happening on team two side of the map versus team ones, which is beneficial for Blinchik because the fighting's not happening, taking out his structures, but the reclaim is sitting on Maitz's position, which means he's, it's easier to reclaim. The most important thing of course is can Blinchik take territory and keep it while, I mean, if he loses units, he takes the territory that he has the units sitting on. But this is a decent chunk of mass that have sitting on the eastern side. And yeah, it doesn't look that much, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, there's 29,000 mass on the field. That's enough to make a monkey. I think it's enough to make a fat boy. It's pretty close, I think, if it isn't. And in terms of reclaim totals overall, Blinchik is leading a little bit, but not by much. And then total mass accrued, it is favoring Maitz ever so slightly. The mass per second is now favoring Blinchik, which will make the numbers a little bit more even. But again, large group of T3 forces building, and Blinchik doesn't have that many forces around. He's constantly sending in by twos, by threes. Another transport inbound kills, well not kills, but gets killed off by the ASF. But the bricks are able to at least try to fend off the Percy's. And I don't know where were those engineers going, have no idea. Now we have a couple of bricks sandwiching a couple of Percy's in the east to the west. We have the comm over here in the middle finally trying to reestablish himself in the west. Unfortunately, I feel like those mixes are not going to last much longer. T, not T3, but five-star veterans on board that commander just barely over. And he's just taking shots. He's just not doing anything about it. And that brick, to be fair, could have taken off these three mixes very easily. No bombers as of yet here from Blinchik. No bombers as of yet here from Maitz. There could be a situation where enough gunships or something comes and kills off the comm. He has dropped into the yellow, to be fair. It is pretty high yellow. He's sitting at 12.5k, almost back up to 13,000 hit points out of 18,000. The comm of Maitz is actually now down here. And still, the open... In the, open. the middle is open pretty much. Yeah, forces can come in to try to close the gap, but there's really no concerted effort to guard the easiest avenue to the other side of the map. I don't know if that's a strategy on purpose or by accident or both, but it's just one of those scenarios where you know, if Blinchik had enough forces, he could just march him straight down and possibly just call it a day there. In the north, another group of forces inbound from my age just rampage in the countryside in the north. That same group of mechs is taken offline for, what, the fifth or sixth time at this point. Percy's trying to hold off the bricks, but there's just not enough forces to hold this position long term. 
fights constantly coming in and he is sending his units to his to their deaths but he's doing economic damage all the time and not allowing Blinchin to get a base online to get shield to get PD to get AA to get anything online in that northern section and make it autonomous he has to constantly micro that section of the map and that's APM that he could be spending on a bunch of other things and that is one of the strategies is just draining your opponent of so much APM where you could be attacking from four different directions and they can only cover three of them and that fourth one is the one that ends up winning the game and that is a strategy to do in all the manner of numbers of games whether it's uh, 1v1s or 8v8s it works every time just to overwhelm your opponent to where they can't do anything anymore and they'll eventually just break underneath the weight Blinchik is retreating. Don't know why he's retreating. There's only two bricks here, but again, that might be partially due to the fact that he still does not have any other radar systems online. Still only one. You can see, this is what he sees. He cannot see those bricks. Those bricks, from what I remember, don't have stealth capabilities on board naturally, so, or at all. Of course, I can't see the detailed stats. That's the other thing is I can't see, like, the transportable, aquatic, all of those little easy features to read again i've enabled all those settings don't know why they're not showing up more percy's being star lifted i don't know where they're going per se it looks like they're going northward lots of air facilities now planned here for blinchik he might win this game with air and in the air department he is losing now does look like maiz has not developed a little bit more air facilities now he's going for a crab he's skipping the monkey which I feel like at this point in the game, if either player builds an experimental, that's probably the game. Because all it will take is one to just ravage either the main base or the comm or both. And that would pretty much nullify any sort of ability to come back. Gunship come in and just clean sweep these mechs. This is even a T3. And I don't know it's going to last any much longer. I mean, it's losing hit points very quickly. There is a nice little skyboxer over here. He was dealt with most of the gunship. There's another one and another one and another one coming off the line all the time. So yeah, the T3 Max is saved, but it lost all of its mass storages, which means it loses 9 mass per second. Plus these T2 Maxes who have also lost 9 mass per second. So that's 27 mass a second that Blinchik has now lost, putting Maitz in the lead once again. Oh, no, oh, oh. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that was... I don't know. The number keeps going up and down. Maybe it's recon related. But the ASFs for Maitz are sitting on the northern western side of the map on technically Blinchik's side of the map. He just doesn't care. He's like, hey, I can sit him over here. I know you can't beat me. And that's where he's been attacking a while. This He knows this side is weak. This side is a little bit stronger. And that's why we've seen more inroads for Blinchik on the southern side. But we do see now Maitz is countering with a large amount of bricks. He's not allowing any units, even if they get transported down there, to go anywhere at this point. A couple of remaining units in the north. Is Blinchik producing any sort of big ticket items? He is going for a upgrade. It is the shield upgrade, so it'll give him 19,000 hit points, keeping him at 37,000 hit points combined. Now we see a couple of Percy's emerge from the water. And I think the Bricks will have this actually. They had a little bit better engagement, I think, initially. And of course, the Percy's are not shooting at the same target, so that doesn't help. And we do see a couple of gunships going to assist that fight, even on top of that. So, not really great here for either team, but it is a little bit better for my age because, of course, the Eco lands on his side of the map with the Reclaim does, at least. In the south, another group of forces brewing. Not that many. A couple of Percy's, a couple of flat cannons, a couple of shields, and a couple of fodder as well. But it's just more posturing. And you can just see, look at this, that Team 2 still controls it. And now, even in the water situation, the bricks have the upper hand. The Percy's don't have torpedoes on board. But the bricks do, and that's a one-sided engagement. The Cy I keep saying Cerebral. The Cybrans are known for the utility a lot of units have torpedoes. I mean, you have the Brick, you have the Monkey, you have the the Wagner. I think they have torpedoes on board. I think they're technically yeah, I think they're technically torpedoes. I think they're under the water at least. And then the Monkey, uh, the Calm can also have torpedoes. Obviously, torpedo bombers. 
there's a lot of units that can use torpedoes. They are very effective in the water in that regard. And you can see they're still damaging the Perseus. So even if they come out, this one has 20 hit points remaining. This one has a thousand. That one easily wiped out. The other one not going to last much longer. And even just the passing renegades chop up another couple hundred as well. It's not looking good for Team One's Blinchig in the middle. Looking like it's a little bit better in the north, but not by much. And in the south, once again, the force is wiped out. Or getting to be wiped out here shortly. It's just not going well for Blinchik in any theater, either in the north, the south, or the middle. Shield is now done. So he's now, again, like I said, said sitting at 37,000 hit points. And I don't know why it's stuttering so much. I don't know if it's just because, for some reason, my machine doesn't like this replay in particular. But I... Recorded that other video early and I had none of these issues. At least this one at least, which is very weird. Seems like every video I do, there's a different issue. Yeah, I had this really weird recording issue with this one in particular. Where I was a little bit over 25 minutes or so. And I noticed that there was just an error message. Like there's not enough space on where I was storing the recordings essentially. And there went an Omni as I'm talking about it. And it was... It was completely, there was like two other recordings in there. That's it. That's all that was in there. Maybe 10 or so gigs out of 200 gigs storage. I just don't know why that was an error message from OBS. So I had to restart. That was annoying. Another T3 mechs about to go down. Facilities go down. That tran that, tran that uh, bomber is going to get shot down. But more importantly, the Omni got taken offline. And Blinchik is now blind. He went for the Omni, but... Can't keep it online long enough. Couple of Wagner, no Wagner, a couple of Whalers inbound. Going after more of those T3 Nexus. One gets taken offline. The second one is not feeling well. There's a lot of bo skyboxes down there. And they rip apart those hit points. This position over here, vulnerable to the everything. That's another 18 mass a second. That Blinchik is just not getting back anytime soon. Very unfortunate. He's just suffering. But he is, to be fair, even though he has lost a T3 mix and the other T2 mixes, he's still sitting at more mass per second than his opponent. That could be reclaim related. And in total, it's about the same for how much reclaim each player has, well, reclaimed. Those bombers are going to be very dangerous if Maitz is able to stack them up, which is one of the reasons... By Blinchik probably sent the spy planes in. He'll see the crab that's being built, and it's already half done. That could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Blinchik isn't producing any sort of units to counter that in terms of any bombers. I mean, he's producing as many Percy's as he can and skyboxes as well, but that crab emerges from the water. That might be game right there. Unless there's just a lot of Percy's to counter. And of course, Mites is going to know this. So he's probably going to counter with some artillery or something. But it's just a lot of mind games at this stage. Of, oh, I'm building this. Then I'll counter with this. But if my opponent is going to think about that, then i got to counter with this. But he could counter with... And it's just a constant mind game in your head of what do you do exactly. But it does look like that's what Mites is doing. He's just keeping Blinchik at bay just long enough to get that crab online and it's about to take over in the green as well so it's pretty close to being done and there is a fat boy that has been started well a bit finished in time i don't know unless most of the mass and it does look like a lot of the engineers are going to that it's going to be a uef versus cybrin experimental one-off essentially if one experimental lives it's not game for the either for the for that one player because you can still counter a fat boy very easily. It is kind of easy to counter a crab. It just depends, again, what forces you have, what defenses you have, that sort of thing. In the north, those mechs is, again, staying offline. A little bit of attack did happen. Blinchik moves north and goes, hey, I have 37,000 hit points and a gun. So go away. Just see, again, a brick or two th th running around. Another T2 mech going to go offline. That's another six mass a second. And Blinchik cannot afford to lose any mass. He needs to accelerate the fat boy construction. It's almost going to tick over into the yellow, to be fair. But that crab is almost done. It's in the green. It's going to have a little bit of walk to get here. Or get there, I should say. So it's all going to come down to can the crab do significant damage either before, during, or after the fat boy is constructed. Because if the fat boy stays online long enough... 
It's going to force Maitis' forces back a decent amount or at least into the water. And it could just be bombardment till death, essentially. ASF moving in and gunships moving in as well. Gonna go after that. Uh, Percy gonna wipe its off, wipe its uh, face off the surface of the planet. There goes that. There are a nice little half squadron, a wing or so, of those gunships, and they're gonna go for a T3 P gen. That's gonna hurt. That's not gonna be great here for Blinchik. That is gonna go down. Even if the gunships lose all of their numbers, that is a big ticket item to lose. There's a couple more P gens back here. Pigeon does blow it, takes out a couple of ASF actually with it. And those gunships get in behind the AA forces. The AA forces, of course, now targeting, or the air forces, let's say, targeting those units. The experiments is now done for my hits. Man, it is just pausing halfway through for some stupid reason. I don't know why. And we do see, of course, the whaler getting bombarded there. Of course, that Pigeon is it's going to be close. Oh, it goes down. Of course, one of them goes down. Not all of them, which is good. But it could have been deadly for sure. The fat boy hastily built very quickly. I was surprised. I'm surprised by how fast it was built, though. But it is a fat boy v. Crab affair. And that might be... Either this might be the win for Blinchik. This might be the win here. For Maitz, and we do see Blinchik immediately builds another one, at least starts. He is producing those things incredibly quickly. But this is zero speed. I mean, he's getting hundreds of hit points into that unit very quickly. Transport with a couple of bricks inbound here, and the transport gets shot down immediately. Actually, right next to that uh, rack, too. Very really easy for those engineers to scoop up the mass. And it looks like the crab is not going to go straight down the middle. It's going to go south and then north. It does buy Blinchik even more time to build his second fat boy. And there's a lot of bricks going to stack up here to protect this crab. And now we see a couple of Gunthers being produced to counter the fat boy, not allowing it to get close enough to do damage. That is a good way to counter it. You just have enough T2 artillery and it just can't really go anywhere. Because if it moves close enough, it's dead. Because you just rip it apart. You see just engineers moving over. A couple of units over here. Nothing terrible. The ASF count is pretty large for Maitz. I'd say he's probably about 50. 51. There it is. Really, really good guess there for myself. Pat myself on the back here a tiny bit. That is air. I would say air dominance at this point because there's really nothing for Blinchik. The only disadvantage, of course, is that air isn't easily countered, but it can be countered a lot easily. A lot, it can be countered easier than land just because you can build a bunch of AA and call it a day. And shields, AA and shields. PD can only output so much damage, and so can AA emplacements, but I just think it's it's easier to counter air with stationary defenses than it is to count, counter with land, land with stationary defenses. Especially if the units can move very quickly, then T2 artillery is kind of out of the question. The fat boy's down here. Second fat boy is down, or down, is online. And that crab might just full send it. Most of those T3 forces, if they are targeted, will be wiped off. But they might just go straight for the comm if he knows where he is. Does my eats know? Oh, he knows, and he's going to get that comm. We do see artillery has been built, but it hasn't been built in time. Blinchik knows it. He knows he's under threat and has just got to flee. I don't think there's anywhere out of this here for Team 1's commander. We even see, of course, some fighting going down in the north. There are two fat boys, of course, but it's going to just come down to can the comm survive or can he be killed off by Maitza's crab. And now we see the crab shifting southward. One of those fat boys is definitely exposed there. It's moving too far north. It's now in range, and that crab's going to have a nice engagement here. Blinchik is now going to be overwhelmed even... If that crab is defeated, all the bricks are going to come in, wipe out. Uh, essentially, the Pigeons would be the main target. Blinchik sitting at, uh, again, 37,000 hit points. One brick is down. Next day, thanks to an overcharge, one fat boy is down. Now we see a Novak Center being hastily essentially reclaimed. I don't know what he's going to do with all that mass, though, but 
not going to go to PJ, not PJ, but e storage is blowing up next to the comm, not a great idea. The fat boy over here, that's not going to be good. She holding a PJ, that's going to blow up, probably be killed off the fat, almost killed off the fat boy. And now it's just going to be a running down on the comm, he's going to get into some more shielding, but here comes all the focus fire from the bricks. The crab, of course, is the was the main distraction, that is what threw the defenses off for Blinchik and will pretty much ultimately end his life. Another p is targeted. That's going to almost kill the comm off. And that last p might just do it. He might die by... Ooh, he almost died by p but he died by, I think, a grab shot technically. That is it here. 51 minutes, 37, clo 7, 37 seconds on the clock. And Maitz wins the game here at... I mean, like I said, almost 52 minutes. And that was a great victory in the sense that he used... It was just came down to one unit. At the grand scheme of things, it just came down to the crab. Had the fat boy maybe pulled back when he noticed that the crab was pushing in, maybe it could have been saved. It would have been close to take out the crab, but again, the big issue was all of those bricks. It was able to do a lot of damage on the comm, and those bricks probably would have taken out the P-Gen anyways and killed the comm that way as well. So definitely unfortunate here for Blinchik. He just got a little bit overwhelmed at the end there, and that's... Kind of all it takes sometimes, but again, let me know down in the comments what you felt about the match overall. Of course, if you haven't done so already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I know I don't do a lot of 1v1s, so if you do enjoy these 1v1s, please let me know. That way I know that these videos are enjoyed by a lot of you, and I will make more of them in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next one.